This video will look at the various things that you can do when you're working with an album in Google Photos. So in Albums View, there's an album that I'm going to concentrate on. When you run the mouse over it, there you say three little dots, a menu, which give you more options. And they're the three things that you can do with those options. You can rename the album, rename it, click done. You can delete the album. And if I delete the album, all photos in that album are still within the photos library. It's just the album and that organizational aspect is, is gone. If I open that album, this picture, if I check the date that it was taken, just by with the eye, on October the 2nd, then go back to the album view and select the option and delete the album, delete. So that album disappears from the album view, but the pictures will still be available inside the photos library. So if I went up to October 2, that's the photo there. So the photos are still there, they're just not in the album. So back into albums view and let's open up an album and you've got some options up here. So when you select this button, you can add more photos to that album. So I could go back and put these photos into the new album. I'd select done to add them. Three photos were added. View activity. So if it was a shared album, then I could see what photos had been added or who'd contributed a comment. This isn't a shared album, so there's not much you can actually see in here other than what photos have been put into the album. Close that. You can share the album. So if I click share, I can either email a link to this album to as many people as I like, or I can just create a link and then in one email compose a message and send that link. That's sort of a quicker step. If I was going to send it to five different people via email, then that's five email addresses I have to find. If I want to send it to those five people, I can just create one link and send one email. So to create a link, which is the best option to share, just click Get Link. And it gives you a, a link which you then copy. And then in your mail, so if we're going to compose a new message, and I'm going to paste the link, first of all, send in a little message what, about what that link is that you've actually sent them. So here are some photos of the dogs photos. I'm going to send it to myself just so you can see what will happen when you receive a message from someone. So I'm going to send that. So here's the message that someone would have received that gives them a link to that album. So if I click that link, that person now has the album available to them. They have no access to the rest of your Google Photos library and they can't edit or change the photos. They can simply download them. So if I go up here, uh, the options they have up there will not be as many as you can see here because I'm sending it to myself and I'm still in my Google library, photos library, I see more options. But basically what people will be able to do is download the photo, print the photo, uh, show, uh, show it in a slideshow. They'll also be able to forward it onto someone else. So if you're going to share your photos, be aware that that person can share them on to someone, somebody you don't even know. The more options that you can put, create a slideshow. So if you had your photo library connected via a big screen TV, 
using Chromecast, for example, or an Apple TV, or a, a USB stick. Then you can show a slideshow. Uh, let's get out of that. Uh, you can download all the photos in the album. So if I click download all, that will start a download. If you share your album, that's what the recipient will be able to do. So it'll be in my downloads folder, the docs too. And it's not even a zip file actually, it's just downloaded all those pictures. That's all those there. If I click and open one, that's one of the pictures. So that's a, a, a good way to download them all. You can view by recent activity, which is what we looked at before. So what actually has happened in this album at the moment, no, nothing's happened because I haven't changed anything in that one. You can set the album cover. So if I didn't like the, the main picture of that album, I could pick another one. So I want this one to be the cover for that album. So when I'm looking in album view, that's the picture that's now the cover. You can delete. So again, you've got that option to delete the album from within this menu. You can set your sharing options. So when we did that share before, anyone with the link can see these photos and the people who've been invited or joined. So turn that off. Then that's going to stop all the sharing. So once you, when you share your album, and you might give it a week or two so everyone's had a chance to, to look at it and download the photos, then you can stop the sharing. So I don't want to share that anymore. So I'm deleting the link. Now if you wanted to change the sharing options, you could also turn this on, which would mean that in, everyone who has the link to that shared album can now also add their photos and their videos to your album and other people can comment and others means those people that have the link you can invite more people also if you've sent the album to five people and you want to send it to some more you can just click it or put in a new email address and the other thing you can do is edit the album and in editing the album you can move the photos around so if i wanted to Put this one first, I can move them and you can group them into similar things or times or places, however you want to do it. And that's called a custom order. Up in the top right here is the way to sort photos. You can sort the photos by the oldest photo in terms of date when it was taken to the newest, to the recently added or custom. Now, if I changed it to the newest, and that's going to replace the custom order with the newest sort. And it's going to automatically sort those pictures based on the date they were taken. And as soon as I change them around in any way, it's now become a custom order. Uh, you can add a location or a map, which is really useful if you've got photos that are part of a holiday. So if I wanted to put a map in, it's asking me for location. So if I was on a, on a holiday, for, for example, if it was from uh, Melbourne, Victoria, Australia, to AB Sydney, New South Wales, Australia, then it's going to give me a map of that area. So it's really only useful for those photos where you can say oh, we're on holiday and we went from Paris to London or whatever it was. So I can delete that. Don't need the map. You can put a location in. So if I wanted to say where are these photos taken, well, these photos were taken in. And as you type, it's going to give you the exact location of Churchill Park and that's in this location. And I can move that block of text to different photos but I can't associate that text with one particular image. I can't have it say on the bottom of this photo, Churchill Park Drive. It has to belong with a block of photos. So it's got a limited uh, usefulness, I think. And if you don't want it, you can delete it. Adding text, the same thing. You can add text that, that says no, driving in the car. And then I can move those photos that are to do with driving in the car. There's a driving with the car. And I want um, that text to belong to those photos. So I'm going to move that, these ones away. 
You've got to wait till a little blue line comes up there. So those three, fo three photos are driving with the car. So it's, it's one way of organising your album with some sort of uh, information about what's happening in those photos. And that one's just adding more photos. It's another way to add more photos to that existing album. And then the tick to accept any changes. And you can go back to albums view. So in this video, we looked at all the different things you can do with an album in Google Photos.